Hey everyone, I'm really excited to bring to you today's presentation on typography from one of our art directors here at Epiphio. As is the case with all of these videos, this one is a recording from an internal video call here at Epiphio. So the production quality isn't anything to write home about, but I promise you the content will more than compensate for it. So without further ado, here's a presentation from Katie Lee on typography. I'd like us to watch some intro videos first. Um, and I know it's not ideal to watch on the screen, but since we're recording this, I think it's fine. A lot of people think type is really intimidating. Everyone can hear. The reason for that is it used to be a specialist knowledge for very, very few people who took years to learn it. And now if I put myself in the shoes of, say, my grandson, who's 18, he looks at the screen and he says, oh, my God, I pulled on the menu and it goes all the way to the cellar. And that's only up to B. Type is, is very much in, in, our, uh, in our minds, in our brains. We, we see words all the time. I mean, the biscuit packet in the morning, the, the package of milk, whatever we look at has type on it. And you look at a word in a certain typeface and there is a subliminal uh, message there that you say, oh, it's sweet or it's hard or it's soft. But it also makes it complicated because you can use the right word and get the wrong message across and vice versa. The context decides a lot for you already if you think about where people may receive your message. A lot of the, uh, the habits and the denominations that we use come from the metal type, the leading and the sizes, and there's pixels and there's picas and there's millimeters and there's points. There are all these things you have to answer and click. A lot of that stuff comes from a technical history that doesn't apply anymore. If you don't know all the, the expressions, it means you can't show off, but you can still make good type. Try and reduce your toolbox. If you want to use all 5,000 typefaces that come up on your menu, you're going to fail. Go for something that you really feel comfortable with. You don't have to say why, you just feel comfortable with it. And use it until you're bored with it, or until somebody tells you it sucks. <laughs> Certain things have to be mechanical, have to be precise. Certain things have to be pretty. Go and, and, and learn for, from what other people do. Nobody expecting you to win prizes, just Use what you're comfortable with and build your knowledge from there. It's not scientific, it's just common sense. Trust your instincts, and if it doesn't work, you're going to know. Yeah, it's a, it's a stunning, stunning video. And uh, how can I follow that? No, um, like he said, he gets into a little bit of technical things at the end, uh, but he sets it up in a way that says like, you, you just need a little bit. And so I'm gonna hopefully in this, in this hour, give you a lot of it, a lot of little things that um, make it really easy to have good type in, in your videos. So I'm going to be kind of jumping back and forth, which may be annoying um, between some tabs for for showing videos and this illustrator PowerPoint <laughs> that I made. Um, so I there are so many things to talk about when you choose type for animation and something that we come up, something that comes up a lot and make it better is how do we get type to feel like it belongs in the video? So I've like narrowed down what we're gonna be talking about to that idea. So here you see choosing type for animation. I think this is like an aerial font. It's really basic. Um, it's centered in the middle of the page. It looks fine. It looks, it looks like on a white background, it could belong. But what happens when you just spend a little bit of time, you know, picking picking something. You start to get a little bit more character. You start to get a little bit more feeling for like what type of animated video this could be a part of. 
And then if I give you three other options, now, now we're really trying to see what type of video these are gonna be. Like the middle one to me feels very sophisticated or it feels a little bit more scholarly. The one on the bottom feels kind of cool. It feels like, you know, uh, there might be some characters. It might be like a fun video. The one on the top feels pretty professional to me. Um, and all of these things I'm, I'm using, you know, the first one, that's the same font. That's, a, that's one font with two different widths. The second one is two different fonts, but they contrast really, really hard. And I've applied a little bit of color to make, to make you really respond to a specific word in, in this block. Um, and then the last one, I've kind of combined those things, color, two different typefaces, different weights, and I've used a graphic element behind one of the words to like, and, and formatted it. I've, I've laid it out in a way that's pleasing to the eye. If I change this and I put this here, you know, this doesn't look, I mean, it does look kind of cool, but like, it's not, it's not as designed as like, you know, something that makes, something that creates a bigger block. So I'm gonna walk through kind of the nature of these things and how you can kind of start to think about type in this way where it's it's singing a little bit more like this versus this. So the first things first is you you have to start thinking of type as a design element. Um, if you're not already, you have to start thinking of it as uh, as the same level of color, your animation, your shape language, your character design. Even if your video, even if your style frame doesn't have type, like even if the frame you chose to give to the person doesn't have type, I want you to like start thinking about what type you are using like from the very beginning. And some of these things they have in brand, right? So then I'm gonna talk about the, what you do if the brand font is is this or that how to still make it feel like it it fits in the video but um sometimes that's asking them if they would consider if if they're going super organic or you know left or that that you have to ask hey i i'd, I'd like to propose or pitch a few type options that i think might be better suited for this video and and those can still pair with their brand fonts um so my first tangible tip for that is when you're in Storyboard Pro, when you are when you start to board, use real fonts. Use real fonts when you board and make decisions when you start your beats as to the layout of the type, the weight, the color, the size. Um, if you can't find the actual font in Storyboard Pro because it can be pretty weird, uh, substitute it for one that's similar, i.e. Um, serifs, non-serifs, and try to find one that has multiple weights to pick from. I'll cover, I'll cover what all this means still, but like, uh, it's really, really important that it's considered and it starts at the beat level. And the only time I really break away from that is when Storyboard Pro does not really let you manipulate type in a perspective way. So sometimes if I need to indicate that a, a word is in perspective, that's when I'll write it out in my boards. Uh, like, you know, when when the, the words grow from like short letter to big letter in like a space. But otherwise, like every time if I've already picked the font, if they have a brand, a brand font, I'm like working with type in the in the image in the beats from the beginning and then I tell the animator follow this type layout like pretty exactly um so when you start to pick I'm gonna go over now how you pick your type for for video so the first thing I do like we do a style is you have to think about your mood and your tone um and I've all of these okay Time out. All of the things that I'm saying are suggestions. You guys know that I'm speaking with 
authority, but like there are rules that are meant to be broken. You don't have to follow these things to a letter, but if you do follow them, like you'll get pretty, you'll get pretty good results. You can make any of these serif fonts like fit this mood with depending on your color, depending on the, the video, but this is just in general, like you saw in that video, like we have responses to different types and it, they're just pretty natural. And so like the first thing that I do when I think about, so so all of all these things, they're not law, but for the sake of this, they're really helpful. Um, so the first thing I do is I think about my mood and tone. Um, so there are two main classes of fonts, there's serif and there's sans serif. So serif has these little uh, hooks, um, and then sans serif is like the ones that Comic Sans, basically. It's Times New Roman and Comic Sans. Those are your two different <laughs> types of fonts. Um, and uh, I like to think through like, what is the client trying to say? Is this video more like a teaching video? Is it a bio logos? Is it like, uh, uh, you know, pretty common tech video, brand video. Um, and, and this starts to get me thinking, um, especially like, do I want a serif font sans serif? It just starts to narrow, narrow the vision down for what you're going to pick. And then I have like unique cases. I mean, there, there are like so many different fonts. I think uh, papyrus is like emotional is very funny to me. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, I mean, these are also still sans serif, but you see like they're, they're just slightly weirder. So I, I classified them as like a bit, a bit to the, a bit to the left, to the right, whatever. Um, so I think about my mood and my tone, and then I start to think about the style shapes. So, are they hard, sharp, angular, soft? So now you're looking now you can look at like individual treatment of letters, which kind of breaks down why we feel the way about the moods as we do in this, right? Like when we see something chunky or this is really graphic because like the O's are really, really circular or acute, like there's there's really, really thin lines with a lot of tension. Um, this gives a lot more openness, a lot more space. This is really handwritten and like lyrical, soft. So I start to think about this with like the characters, uh, what's on your screen, what type of shapes you're using. Is it like a motion graphics thing where like nothing has edges? Okay, well then do you want a, um, do you want a hard font to contrast those roundness or do you want a round font to like live roundly with you know the characters. Um, this can go both ways. So I feel like a big part of how type fits into an animated video um, is your line widths or lack thereof in a style. Um, if you have thin line weights, do you like? what is going to most likely happen is if there's a lot of like, if there's a lot of strokes in your video, you might want to find a typeface that is close in stroke to the type of strokes that you're using. So if it's pretty thin, you might want to find a relatively thin font and that will live in the video. I'm gonna show an example of it later, but like the other option is to contrast those things. So I feel like when you pick font, you're either trying to get something that lives within that seamless, that feels like it is, you know, similar to the assets that you're creating, or something that is in pretty high contrast to what what type of shapes you have. And I feel like typically it's pretty it's a lot safer to lean towards finding something similar. But uh, either way, you need to decide if you're trying to contrast or mirror. Um, and I think that that is a huge part of cohesion and making things feel like, um, 
like they belong. Uh, so I start to think about style shapes. And something that you'll get better at, I feel like, or I've, I mean, I've gotten better at, um, is noticing really small shape differences. Uh, it can be some things like the O's or like, especially, you know, the circles, O's, A's, P's, how round is the P to the, uh, to a real circle. So like this one is much more like squashed than like an actual round, you know, P, which we use so many videos that are like created on basic shapes that are super graphic, that have super graphic characters. You might want to like find a font, you know, you can also look at the eyes. Um, this is like a square eye. This one is completely a circle and it's very big and it, and it gets that feeling of like cartoon, um, but also not cartoon. It can just read very, very graphically. Um, you can also pay attention to like how high the letter shapes are. So like uh, Futura creates a really graphic effect because it lowers like all of the letters into this kind of like, uh, into this similar space so that, I mean, it just drops it down to like half the size nearly of the L, which creates like a pretty cool effect. Um, this one's super, super, super wide. Uh, this is super, super round. Um, and all of these are sans serif, so there's a lot you can do when you're picking, like not all, not all of them are created equal. And even these subtle differences, if you kind of learn to feel them out, um, are going to give you like different effects. Um, so, wait, <laughs> okay. So, um, Another tangible tip is try to find fonts with multiple weights. At least make sure that they have three, a light, a regular, and a bold. So all of these are the same font. They just have different, they just have different weights. And um, when, you, when you create a hierarchy, you can, it's really easy to like create with size and then with font, with weight. Like now I know exactly what's important. What, what is the header? Think of it as like a newspaper. You know, you have the header and then you have smaller things. And those, all, all, all you're doing is creating these hierarchies like one after another by creating most important to least important. But there's so much you can do when you have these. And they get, and they become more like, you can already see how they become more like assets like you, you, you can like play with a word so much that it doesn't become a word anymore. And all of a sudden you're like, just looking at the shape, like you're looking at them as blocks of text and, and they become more compositional elements and they become like, I'm trying to place a word. Um, so yeah, my, that tangible tip is that you can find ones with weights they have so many different weights. You can have like ultra light all the way up to like extra black. Um, and then an expert level is to play with widths. This is a bit harder to find, but like on Adobe, you can still find like a whole version of a font that's condensed, regular and wide. Um, and that just gives you another, another thing to play with. Typically, this is nice when, you're, when you've decided to use all caps. Um, the with thing because you'll find that it doesn't always like work. Um, you'll find that compositionally you'll struggle a little bit. Like if you if you have a word that has a lot of letters but you want to put it over a word that is less letters and you want them to still read as like a graphic shape. Um, it, it helps to have the widths because basically these are the same size. I didn't change the size, but just because of their widths, they fit over each other. They fit with each other better. Um, I think that's 
that can be important. Um, my other tangible tip is to pick two fonts that contrast each other in the video. Um, if you use only one font, you can pick two weights, like I said before. But I try to find two different fonts, at least two in each video, to give me a range of things to pick. Um, these are the two fonts that I use in the BioLogos video. I have a font that is like fancy and for like one word headers. So I'm not writing sentences with this, but like I'll put it on items. I'll, you know, it, it contrasts with this really, um, with this pretty uh, graphic font in a really nice way where this one is super readable. So it's my go-to for like text on screen that like people have to read really quickly. And this is more of the ornate, like important words. So like faith and science, those headers would get the fancy treatment and then more explanations would get this treatment. And then I play with widths um, or line weights in between using those two because they, they all have options. So you start to build out this like catalog. Um, and then this one, I this pairing I use for the Hoover Prosperity videos. The organic type is the type that's used on all of the assets. Because the assets are painterly, I use the organic type whenever there's something written on a painted asset. And this non-organic shape is everything else that's like written for details, graphs, all of these things. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's another really tangible tip. If your client has uh, a regular font, maybe you can find another font to contrast it. And maybe it looks like, maybe, oh, never mind, they're grouped together. Uh, they're all grouped. Like, even this is a pairing of like fancy, regular. Um, and so, like that, you can. I don't know, you, you get to create um, a bit more variety and contrast. Again, we're looking for things that have contrast to create um, clarity and uh, intrigue. Um, and then third, define your capitalization style. Um, so with the multiple types in a video, you can use multiple types in a video throughout, but I try and define their usage and keep it consistent throughout the video. So what does this mean? So when you decide how to use your text, you can go with all caps, sentence case, title case, or lower case. These are your capitalization options for your video font. Um, like I was saying, before I use multiple types of this capitalization style in one video, because throughout the video, I might have like a word that represents something on an asset that we're moving around. So with a word that represents something, I'm probably going to have it be all caps. But if I have a sentence on screen, well, it might be a sentence case or it might be a title case. Um, those kind of depend on if it's more like a header or actual information. Um, and like I said, you can mix and match these things, but I try to keep them consistent to the usage. So if I have one word like peace is on a block and it's in all caps, if I have another standalone word, I'm going to try to make that so it's not, it's not all of a sudden capital P and then the rest are are like lower cap, like title case, because that just creates like, you wanna create as much cohesion as possible. Um, maybe these things you'll, you'll be the only one that like notices, but you feel it throughout a video. It's the same way that we talk about like design language or how we're using strokes on like a character. You just wanna keep it consistent. So try to make a choice and stick to it throughout the rest of the video. So now that you've decided on those things, um, when we make points in videos with text, you get to emphasize it. And I feel like I see often that like we 
make it bigger to emphasize it or you capitalize it in all caps like you'll it'll be in like a sentence like this and you'll capitalize the word that's most important before you do that before you make it bigger before you play with caps try playing with these things you can play with italization you can play with color and you can play with weight and none of these things um I haven't changed the height or the size of the words, uh, but I've emphasized, I've made you read all these things differently and it works the same way. And then if you're feeling frisky, you can combine all three or two or whatever you want. Like you can make combinations of them. Um, and I don't recommend that you play with caps um, unless you are also playing with size. Uh, and so this kind of like the capitalization rule that I said, it can be broken. All of these things can be broken, but you see that you have like, I've now played, I've now bumped it up to all caps as emphasis, but I've also used it as a like block. If you're not gonna have something be in the same like line, then you have to start thinking about it with like, like as a compositional element, which like even this, even this like within the two shapes is feels cohesive, feels okay to me um, in, in these blocks. But I don't think that they would feel okay if I like move them out of this block. It feels less, I don't like it as much, but because I've like integrated it with like an asset basically, or I've, I've put it in the design of like the background, it feels okay. Um, and yeah, I think that these are really important and easy, easy ways to make your type look sophisticated is just like to, to play with these um, uh, when you're trying to emphasize the word which we try to emphasize the word a lot because it helps for clarity, it helps for easy understanding, um, and it makes our points easier to understand. And lastly, um, design into the frame. So after you pick all of that, you want to integrate the type with the composition. Um, it can't be slapped on, it's a part of the video. Consider it as a blocking shape and lay it out like an asset. So something that also, so this is like, where you start to see type as block, as blocks, as as shapes, and less of like a um, an element that is like this word or, or like you're basically when you lay out type, you're creating um, like I said hierarchy, and you want easy readability. And so if I have a statistic and I've centered it like this, but the words look like this, like the shape of the words are changing like that. That's, that's not as pleasing unless you have things, you know, I mean, it could be pleasing. Again, rules are, there's exceptions to all the rules. But if I, this is the same, this is the same amount um, of, of volume as this and I've just rearranged it slightly differently and already to me this feels like it can be more incorporated with the the scene or I'm creating a shape a very specific shape out of the type um, right away uh, another thing that's fun to know is like our brains don't really read centered type super well um, because like not when it's like a sentence like uh, Oh, well, I can't make that centered anyways. When it's like a sentence and we break it up like that, it's pretty hard to read, which is why left justified or right justified, um, that's typically what people go to for like uh, ads and things because it's super, it's super uh, easy to read because our brain understands like, starting over at the left side versus like this shape here with all of these all of this extra like negative space um so yeah it just helps me sometimes to think about the size and like kind of just block out in my head whatever you're looking at and think of it like 
more as like a complete shape than a word? And is your hierarchy reading like right away? Is it doing what you want it to do when you start to lay out like whatever is going on in the scene? Can you incorporate the type like behind or like put it into the scene and have it feel like any other element like you do with with extra plants around or the little like, you know, ornate details that we'll add, like all of those things, you know, the ornate details that we put around that are just really simple graphic shapes, those should be treated as assets just like the type. Anytime you put anything on a page, you're basically like, you've cut up some slips of paper and you're rearranging everything. Just think of it like, you know, think of it like that. We're making these collages and the goal is for a cohesive composition and you want it to feel lived together and you want it to feel, um, you want it to feel like everything is meant to be there. Which, yeah, this is chaotic. Don't, <laughs> I made this really late last night, so there's a lot going on here, but um, successful types in videos comes down to it feeling intentional. Um, color does cover a multitude of sins when you have great branding. Often, um, it's way easier to make the type look good. I mean, they've already picked the type that goes with their, goes with their colors, but like, if you get color, if you put the right color on a type in a video, it automatically feels cohesive. Like if your video has a palette and you're working on assets, you know how like every asset just feels like it can belong. Similar there, like color is just bless, bless color's heart. Um, shape, again, this is just like, and I'm doing an overview now. Shape works with your assets. Try to find something that's similar or contrasted enough so that it stands out. Um, composition work with you, not against. Make sure that your type is working with the composition and not feeling like it's like not incorporated or an afterthought. Um, your widths, are you close or contrasting enough? So it's just, I just feel like if you're not close to the line weights, then you need to contrast it more. Um, I don't know how to, I feel like that's more of a feeling, but like just in general, try to avoid middling choices. Try to avoid choices that don't feel like choices. Um, I feel kind of like, sometimes I feel like bigger choices are better, but also if they're wrong, that they're not better. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, Ultimately, the type needs to support the message and tone and the epiphany. Um, you know, that's the end of the, that's the end goal. So now we're going to look at, um, now we're going to watch a video that covers all these things and you'll see it in action and you'll understand. Um, and then we'll, we'll look at a few use cases after that. Uh, let's see. So now it's like a like a um, review after after a course. There you go.
So like after some explanation, you get to see it in action. I hope you feel like you like kind of know what they're talking about. And as you can see, there are like so many things you can do. Um, I feel like I just wanted to kind of play through a few videos and discuss what I like about like, you know, you just get to see it in action when you when you take a step back and you start to look at videos and you think like, why does this type feel like it's working? Um, you know, I think that this is a really heavy type that contrasts with like a lot of the line work going on, but a lot of it is like shape, like we're not using a lot of line work. So it feels good that it's so thick. It almost feels like it's matching like the same, you know, dimensions of the characters uh, and it has a little bit of serif. And so you feel like it's a little bit more scholarly, a little bit more like, like you're reading a book. Um, I think this one is a really good, oh, I'm not sharing. I didn't, I talked through that and I didn't share what I was looking at. Oh my goodness. I won't make that mistake again. Um, I was talking about this video, um, that I think that this type fits really well into this video because it's pretty thick. It feels like it is like an asset or a shape that is in the video. It has a little bit of that serif uh, to create that like scholarly reading, um, but it's thick enough to feel like an Amazon ad, like I think, and it contrasts really well with wherever they do use these strokes. Um, so I, I think that it's a really good choice of font. Um, in this video, you know, they're playing a lot with the different types of fonts that you have. It feels really organic in some places and then really official in other places. But like you can see, they've picked They've, they've really thought about it as a design shape. You see how they're using it, um, you know, in those specific elements with the other assets. Uh, and it feels chosen and like one whenever it's, whenever it's brought up through the motion, which I'm not talking about today. Um, but like they've considered all the spots that it is, how it feels in the scene. Um, and I think, They've also done this by incorporating the same texture on top of the type. Um, they, you know, they're using the same colors, all of these things, but you can see that they're, they're creating these blocks of type. They're, they're using them as like almost bands, as blocks, um, and that always helps. Uh, here's an example from Epiphio that I think is a really wonderful example of type um, as blocks, as layouts within the text. Uh, and that's kind of like for us to decide when we're making the video, how much, like how important is type? Is type going to be like, are we gonna be using it in almost every scene? Then we'll wanna make sure that we are kind of creating like something like this or considering how we're going to put it in the video. Um, I also like how they used color to kind of emphasize certain words. Um, they're not changing the color of the text, they're changing the color that the text is on. Um, so I think that that is, that's pretty cool how they've split and considered those things. Um, and then, And then if you just take a, I, I had fun last night just looking through like any of these, um, you know, boutique studios and just really quickly getting like a feel for how, you know, Slack already has a font. And obviously they did a really interesting job like incorporating it with the motion, but you can see how they would use color and all these different things to like make it feel one you know, this feels really organic. This feels a little bit drawn. Like I just, this feels, you know, scholarly. Like I, you just trying to like hone in those impressions immediately when you look at something of like, 
what people are trying to do with type um, and how and how it makes you feel because the more you understand how you feel when you look at something, what works for you, what feels cohesive to you, um, I feel like the easier it is to make those decisions for our own videos. Um, so yeah, I, I just enjoyed like, I don't even have to watch the whole video, but just kind of seeing um, off the cuff, like who picked what <laughs> and why um, and what feels good to me and what feels, you know, uh, like this one, I think they do a bit of like script and that feels just really nice and like personable. Um, yeah, so start to, and then if you get like expert level, you'll have like a million, a million types of types in your video. Um, but like all of these things are working to, you know, as, as a compositional element within that one newspaper piece within the overall composition um, and contrasting, you know, the serifs and the sans serifs and uh, you just get a feel for what, what is possible, what's out there. Um, lastly, uh, my favorite uh, site is, one of my favorite sites is Type Wolf. Um, you can see a bunch of different types and you can click on like a type and if it's really expensive or something, they'll show you similar fonts. And they'll also show you like pairings so you can see like, um, you know, what what two fonts people are pairing together um, that I think is just fun. Uh, and you don't need all of this. Again, you can always like, you can always make, uh, uh, there was a video, I was gonna talk about like company fonts and how, um, like, is it IBM? Just like how IBM or some of these corporate fonts, like they're pretty, pretty basic. Uh, oh wait, it was this one. No, it wasn't. Uh -huh, I don't remember. Um, there was one video that I was gonna show where like the font is really, really, really basic, but it feels very, very elevated because, um, because it matches the stroke of the, it matches the main stroke of the video. And so you read it as very like, uh, I feel like you read it as very elevated, even though it's just a really, really simple font. So like, you don't have to have a fancy font. You don't have to, but what's gonna help is if like, it feels like it belongs and you're using it in a way that emphasizes the right things. So, yeah, also we have access to Adobe font, Adobe type kits, which has a lot of different fonts. Um, and you can download them and they're different weights. You just have to go to the font and you browse, say browse, and then you activate. My internet's being really slow all of a sudden. Then you activate them and then you can choose between them and they're free. And Adobe also gives you pairings. So here you can see this has condensed, has all the different weights. Um, again, you don't need all of them. You just need a little bit of them. And then they give you fonts that pair well. They give you fonts that are similar. Um, and it's just a really good resource.